Hi guys, like to welcome you guys all back to my channel and today I am back with my May Reads and June TBR. Real quick, if you guys haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did. I'll have links to everything down below for my other things like Facebook, Etsy, all that jazz. But today I am here to talk about my very, very, very disappointing reading in May. So as you guys know, I opened up my Etsy shop and um, a lot of stuff happened for me in May to where I wasn't able to just sit down and read a book, which kind of messed up like my everything. Um, plus, one thing that I didn't notice is that my May TBR was extremely ambitious because I think most of the books that I picked are no less than 400 pages. Like, War Storm was like almost 700. Um, Traitor, Traitor to the Throne was another 600 pages. Like, I never even got a chance to get to all the books. Like, I got them from the library, I started reading them, and I never even... <laughs> I never even got to like finish reading honestly it it really messed up my month so I didn't do a lot of reading this month and uh, I plan on making up for that in June but I will say that there would be a lot more audiobooks so what books did I read this month so I finally finished the super super long my dear Hamilton um, I thought that the book was really good I'm glad that I chose to listen to it via audiobook because I found that there were certain parts of the book like for example after Alexander Hamilton died this is not a spoiler we all know that he dies before his wife um history lessons Aaron Burr help yourself however there was a like like three chapters almost of just her just depressed and I know it was for, like from her diary standpoint but I still found it annoying like it was even hard to get through listening to it on audiobook but like when her life was thriving, I enjoyed, really enjoyed listening to it. I really enjoyed it from her, her point of view. And then I just, I don't know, I like historical fictions that, I like historical fictions in the idea that technically the story of her life actually happened, but they added some parts in there to give me like some fiction. I don't know how much of it was fiction because Homegirl got played. But, like, I do like the dynamic of the book. So I do recommend it. I just need you to know that it's, like, a full 25 hours of audiobook. So I don't necessarily know how gigantic the book is. But that book has got to be massive. Because, bruh. If you guys can hear the people outside, I don't know what's going on. But their kids are, like, sitting at my door. And I want to go tell them to go somewhere. But I can't. Um, but, yeah. So the next book that I read was Arabella of Mars, which is part one of her series and I have wanted to read her book for a long time and for some reason I was looking on my library TBR because yes I can log in and create a TBR for my library uh that was at like the bottom of my list from like two years ago or something and I never read it so I decided to read it and simply put the premise is it's about a girl obviously named Arabella who grew up on Mars because this is the idea that that we've already colonized Mars and England was profiting off of it. And the same way they had like plantations in like the Americas, they had plantations and things on Mars. But she grew up on Mars and her mother wanted her to become a beautiful English lady. So she took her away from home where then she um, essentially realized that um, her father dies and her cousin feels like her father didn't do justice by not giving him money so he wants to go and kill her brother so that he can take the wealth of the family and leave her family screwed so she ends up pretending to be a boy and gets on a ship and pretends to be a boy the whole ship so pretty much the story the majority of the story is her on the ship acclimating to being on the ship learning about the ship interacting with the captain interacting with this interface I don't want to give too much of that because that's a huge part of the story um, but I gave it, I think I gave it a 3.5 because I felt like the story was creative, but at the same time, the story was very cliche. Um, I felt like her pretending to be a boy, cool, but I guess it gave me like a Treasure Planet vibe where it was a story that had already been told, but because the story was in space, I was still intrigued. Like if this was a movie, I would have definitely watched it, even though I knew how it was going to end. But I will say there is one part of this book that I was like, there is a love situation that ha I'm not even I, I can't even call it a love situation because I'm still trying to figure out like how sway 
But I do plan on continuing the series because why not? It's another like weird fantasy thing. So I'm still going to read it. My favorite book of this month, hands down, was Dread Nation. And I am i don't care that I'm following the hype of everyone else. I could care less. Bruh. First of all, it's set where the final battle of the Civil War that like really was supposed to like be something awesome, zombies came back. And in the book, they're called Shamblers, which I don't know why. She specifically gave them a new name, but I guess zombie, shambler, whatever. And so it's about a girl. She she's a I'm gonna say colored I don't like using that phrase but I'm using it based on the time frame so she's a black girl and she is at a school where she learns how to beat shamblers and um there's this big conspiracy that like literally was not ready for I felt like the story started and just literally kept going and I mean there was there were drops of information in this book where I was like oh oh snap and I definitely listened to it on an audiobook. Highly, highly recommend the audiobook. The girl that does the voice, like, I imagine this young black girl, because she's, I just imagine this young black girl being real smooth. Like, she prob- she's got this super smart mouth, this gorgeous hair. Like, I just imagine her being looking so amazing. But um, I highly recommend this book. I gave it a five out of five stars. I am just going to say that I believe that the idea of, okay, so there's two groups of people. We're gonna call them abolitionists because they're the people who believe like slavery, there's no need for slavery, da 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 da. And they're what we call the survivalists who believe that the reason that the shamblers came back to haunt them is because they just, we tried to destroy God's divine intervention that the colored people are supposed to serve their whiter cousins. And because we were fighting for slavery, that's the sin that we're paying for with the shamblers. I promise you that there is like a white supremacist group that truly believes some foolishness like this. And I believe that's where she got it from. But bruh, that part, ooh, that part. That part annoyed me so quick and so full. But I was like, okay, I'm gonna get through the story. And I'm so glad I did. I also learned that this book is a trilogy. So get hype because she's another black author who has a great premiere book so excited I actually I don't know if she made any other books I don't know but it's like her and Tommy so excited for their part two books like they're definitely gonna be my high, like highly anticipated for 2019 you know when we start making all those videos later on now my most anticipated book of May was War Storm which is the final book in the Red Queen series that you guys know I've had a major love-hate relationship with in that I did not like the first two books but the set or the third book King's Cage did a little something to me right here this book first of all the book is massive it's like 670 some pages has the audacity the audacity to have super super small font so it took me like a week even though I was reading this book like crazy, I was, this book was nonstop action, which I thoroughly appreciated. This book was from multiple standpoints. We had Mare, we had Evangeline, we even had Ivy. I'm sorry, Iris. We even had Iris, we had Maven, and we had Cal. We had it from five different viewpoints and I can't tell you when you hear from each one but when you hear from each one it is a thorough surprise and they are pretty much on the same scene together most of the time because this is war and you see it from all their standpoints but I cannot tell you my favorite my favorite viewpoint oh god my lipstick is peeling my favorite viewpoint hands down was Maven my favorite viewpoint was Maven because Maven is actually crazy. And like, it was amazing that like everybody else described him as a monster, but like you got a chance to go inside his little psycho mind. And I don't know, I loved it. Loved, loved, loved until we got to the end. So y'all already know how I feel about endings to series and endings to books that I've been waiting for if you build me up if you spend 643 pages building me up to this 
climactic event that is like that that is the whole premise pretty much the series was built on this entire premise and you spend two sentences bringing that premise together bruh so there are two points of the series that this book pretty much that this series pretty much hinged on and both of those were addressed in a way that was just garbage like i'm not i can't even think of another way to describe it it was just like dude wait hold on so this was literally the that's it that's it that that's that's it okay and that little epilogue they do at the end was trash i just yeah i just the ending was garbage. I was very disappointed with the ending. I don't know how other people feel about the ending, but me personally, I felt like we had hit the crazy climactic point where like all the different parties were involved and it came down to this this final battle with Silent Stone, which if you don't know what that is, you haven't read the series yet. And then it was just a blank out and then, a, oh my God. But yeah, so I'm finally done with the Red Queen series. I don't know if I'm going to do a review on the entire series. If you guys want me to do a review on the series, let me know. I will definitely do one. Um, we could even do a makeup review for the series. I don't know how I would do that one. But yeah, if you guys want to see something like that, let me know down below. So the book that I'm currently reading, which has how I'm going to transition to June, is Cersei. I was originally reading this book before Warstorm came out, but I didn't actually finish it. Uh, this book is kind of a slow read. I'm on page 90, uh, chapter 8, and it's kind of boring. It's the best way I can put it. Hopefully it picks up, but I'm already 90 pages in, and the book is 377 pages. So I'm kind of concerned because that's almost one-third of the way through, and I'm still not interested. So hopefully I do not DNF this, but so far... It's not living up to the hype. The next book that I want to read is Cinder by Melissa Mayers. It's from the Lunar Chronicles. Um, I, I have a book haul coming and I saw the books and I think I got one of them, which was Cinder. So I want to read that one and decide what I want to do with it. Um, essentially, it's a retelling of the idea of Cinderella, but it's set like in the future and she's like a cyborg and it's very interesting. I... I don't even really have words to form how I feel about it because it is actually very interesting and different. The next book I want to read is Fury Born by Claire Legrand. It's the book uh, I forgot who's doing, forgot who's doing a read, like a read with me or book club thing for this book. But I have heard some good things about the book and it still kind of caters to my whole like fantasy kingdom, bad chick, it, or bad chick, badass chick. Um, sorry, mom. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm interested in reading that. The next book is a book that I mentioned in my anticipated summer releases, and it is The Lost Family by Jenna Bloom. I'm not even going to get into that again. I'll just leave the link to that video where I explain why I'm interested. The next book is The Bird and the Blade by Megan Bannon. That's another book from the anticipated series. Remember how I said like June 5th and August 7th were like major drops for me? So yeah, so the, of course, that also means that I'm going to be reading Never World Wake, which will be my first psychological YA thriller-esque book. So we'll see how I like that. The next book that was on my last TBR, but I'm determined to read this book, is The Last Musician, Magician. See, it's another thick book. Like all of the books that I picked last month were really thick. So um, hopefully I can find some of these books on audiobook and read them. Um, and listen to them while I do work because I have a lot of uh, projects that I've been working on and it's easier to listen but yeah so that was my uh, May Reads June TBR what books do you guys plan on reading are there any books that you're looking forward to coming out that I don't know about please let me know all of that down in the description in the comment section and until then guys thank you so much for watching and bye